uh, and we are here today with Professor Campbell McLaughlin. Uh, and I'll start by saying it's a, it's a great honor to be able to interview you and all of us here at the Eminent Scholars Archive are grateful that you're taking the time to do this. Well, that's a pleasure. Um, it's, I still struggle with the idea of being described as an eminent scholar, but uh, uh, from my side, it's of course been a delight to be here for a year in Cambridge with, amongst so many friends and with so much uh, intellectual stimulation. Oh, wonderful. I'd like to start by just briefly running through some of the highlights of your uh, rather, rather remarkable career. Uh, so you were born in 1960 in New Zealand. You served uh, a brief two years uh, in an undergrad program at the University of Canterbury before entering the LLB program at the Victoria University of Wellington uh, from 1981 to 1984. You graduated first in your class, received the Chapman Tripp Centenary Award and uh, some scholarships and a junior lectureship, if I'm correct. Uh, from there, I believe you enrolled in the um, PhD program at University College London. And somewhere around that time, did a, uh, you, you earned a diploma cum laude at the Hague Academy of International Law and spent some time at the legal division of the Commonwealth Secretariat. Yes, that's all true. Uh, John, and uh, it sounds like that as though it was all a carefully designed um, plan, but at least at the time, it, uh, it was just, uh, it wasn't, it was... Uh, a series of decisions. I think when you're young, you, you sort of follow your impulses to some extent. Um, certainly uh, at the time, uh, as now, Victoria University of Wellington was very well uh, known in international law terms, uh, both in public international law and, and private international law. And that was really an important part of my inspiration in going there, uh, which was well realized. Um, and then when I'm, uh, came to, I came initially to the UK, um, following my then girlfriend, now wife, uh, Rona, um, and had a year working at the Commonwealth Secretariat informally, really. There was a remarkable New Zealander called Jeremy Pope, who was then the director of the legal division. And that was in the era of Sonny Ramphal, which was a very um, vibrant time for the work of the Secretariat. And I'd been, it had been suggested to me by my professor of private international law, Tony Angelo, that I should enrol for the Hague Academy. At the time, and, and in New Zealand, I had no idea really what, what was involved, and in particular, no idea what was involved in sitting for the diploma. I thought uh, that everybody enrolled for the diploma. I arrived in The Hague to discover that of the 350 students there, uh, about 300 and 30 of them were there essentially to attend the odd lecture and have a good time. And 20 had the self-induced misery of trying to prepare for an exam that it was almost impossible to prepare for since the jury was entitled to ask you any question that they wished to ask uh, before a public audience in the civil law style um, about any aspect of public or private international law. Um, so uh, it has the reputation of being a rather fluky um, qualification, but uh, it's certainly the certificate on my wall, which I feel the proudest of having uh, achieved because it's um, still a rather unusual thing. And of course, it started a lifelong um, relationship with the Hague Academy as well as a student initially and then subsequently uh, as a lecturer. Excellent. Um, uh, before we move forward, um, perhaps we could we could just, just go back. Um, you were born in a Christchurch. Yes. Okay. And and and, and what do you remember of your, of your family growing up? <laughs> well, I um, so Christchurch in my childhood uh, had the reputation of being the most English of uh, cities in New Zealand, and perhaps the most English city outside uh, this country. In fact, that was a, more of a myth, perhaps, than a reality. Uh, but. Uh, it was certainly a very quiet and orderly existence, something which has sadly been shattered in uh, more recent times as a result of um, the earthquakes and, and the like. But my childhood was certainly a very um, peaceful childhood. My father was a, um, a solicitor in Christchurch. Um, so he was obviously keen that I should study um, the law um, and had, I suppose, personally imagined that I might join the family firm and, and the like. Um, but once I got the bit between my teeth in, in studying the law, and in particular got uh, something of an idea of what it might be to engage in litigation as an advocate, uh, 
um, I began to think about other possible ways of um, of using my legal studies. And I guess I always gravitated towards the international aspect, which certainly in those days was unusual, at least in New Zealand, it was it was unusual. Most people were very focused on commercial practice and, and uh, focused domestically. Um, and um, that was never my main driving force. Um, I gravitated naturally towards um, the international subjects in the degree and um, always was kind of looking a bit beyond the horizon, uh, which isn't to say that, uh, I mean, I, I still retain sole New Zealand nationality and, and of which I'm, of course, greatly proud. <laughs>